Hey babes, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am picking up where I left off with my story time series. As a brief recap, in the last episode, I had just spent the night with my boyfriend uh, rebelliously. My parents had no idea. And in this episode, I'm gonna talk about our summer flings and some other adventures that we went on and what led to our inevitable breakup. No trigger warnings today, so you are safe to watch this episode. So let's get right into it. During the spring of this year, I spent a lot of time after school hanging out with my boyfriend since the weather was getting nicer. Um, I will say my curfew that I had at home was being neglected a little bit. I was just like kind of an F you to my parents, but also like I wanted to live life, okay? Like I wasn't going to be stuck in the house. So I spent a lot of time with my boyfriend in the Humber. I'm probably going to be talking about this place more and I don't remember if I've mentioned it yet in my story times, but essentially there is this place that I refer to as my rock. I talked about how the Humber kind of connects to my house from the back. There's a hill that goes down and then there's a river that parts the Humber ravine area. One side is public where there's a public trail and the other side is kind of like nothing. It's just kind of like foresty area that nobody really goes. In this area, there is a really big boulder rock, and this is the spot that I refer to as my rock. It's literally down a trail near the street that I lived and is pretty easy to get to, but it isn't necessarily a public spot, so it's very discreet. My boyfriend and I would go here after school, and we would literally just find a place to lay down in the grass. We would have like a sweater or something thrown down on the ground, and I would lay on his lap. I would literally just chill and relax and hang out and enjoy each other's company. It was very peaceful and very relaxing and I really enjoyed these experiences with him. I will admit around this time he did start wanting things from me. Um, he did try to show me how to use my hands but honestly A it was awful like I was just not good at it and be like it was a lot more work and that's literally the extent of those kind of activities that I experienced in high school we shared these experiences with each other throughout the end of the school year while the weather was really nice and warm and dry towards the very end of the school year I did have a cat that was like one or two years old that I had gotten when it was a newborn kitten and she gave birth to kittens I think there was six or eight of them I don't remember there was a lot of kittens they were all in my room. They were so, so cute. The litter box always smelled disgusting, but it made up for it when they literally all slept like on my head and on my bed with me. Some of them were cuddled up around the other areas of my bedroom. They were just so cute. And sometimes they would like chase each other around my room. It was so adorable. There's like two orange kittens. There's two black kittens. There's one silver tabby. I feel like there's at least one more, but I don't remember. We did end up keeping two of the kittens, the silver tabby, and one of them was a black kitten. Since we couldn't keep all of them, my mother was reaching out to people around her trying to ask if anybody wanted free kittens. Predominantly she was asking at church, but I was also asking around at school as well. There was one kid at school that was interested, and his mother did come over with him and See if they were going to get a kitten. I don't think they ended up getting a kitten. My friends did come over one day to see and play with the kittens. How could they resist? They were adorable. And also, one of my friends really wanted a kitten, even though her father did say no to it. That day, and that day only, was the only day ever that I'd had a boy in my bedroom. My boyfriend was allowed to come into my room. I had a few friends over, so it wasn't just him. And we were all playing with the kittens. It was a really nice time. After the school year ended, my boyfriend and I still wanted to hang out, so we decided that what we would do is I would meet him towards the Walmart area Area. and that was quite a far walk too. It was like a 45 or so minute walk from where I lived and it was hot. I was always so sweaty upon arriving. It was always such a stressful walk too because my mother would literally leave the house and stalk me as to where I was going. And so I literally would have to, there was like a couple apartment buildings 
and I would literally have to like run circles around these apartment buildings trying to dodge her and then like cross the street into the plaza and like try to like run laps through the plaza to evade her like I literally had to like run like she was trying to keep up with me and she was genuinely stalking me like as if i didn't know like obviously i know she was behind me it was so annoying so i would meet up with my boyfriend and we would actually navigate to one of his friends that lived around the walmart area we would hang out and that's actually the first time i found out about the video game persona his friend was actively playing persona in his bedroom we would like just hang out and chat and play games and watch games and watch anime. I think we were watching the Trigon anime series. It was actually really good. I very much enjoyed it, even though I only watched like the first seven or so episodes. A very old school anime for anyone who knows what I'm talking about. There was a couple times where he did want his friend to leave the room so that I could have some one-on-one -on -one time with my boyfriend. And it was always like really awkward because I remember this one time like one, I felt really bad because like it's his friend's house and his friend's bedroom, so it was really weird. And I remember he asked me on his friend's behalf if I would be interested in all three together. And I was just not into that or interested in that. And I was also not very attracted to his friend either. So that was really weird, <laughs> but did happen. A couple times during the summer, since his family had moved to Ajax, which happened around the time we had just hooked up, he suggested on behalf of his parents, grandparents, who actually recommended it too, was to pick me up and have a full day hangout at their place. And we did do this on a couple of occasions and it was a really good time. Again, I had to avoid my stalker mother and run around the plaza. And once I saw my boyfriend and his grandmother in the parking lot, quickly making a maneuver to slip in, slide back in the vehicle so I couldn't be seen by my creepy stalker mother and navigate to his place where we would hang out for the day and then his grandfather would drive me back home or at least close enough to home so that I could navigate home by walking. He did not take me directly to my house because then I would get caught by my mother, my absolutely crazy, insane mother. So we had some really great experiences throughout our relationship and we had a really good time during the summer as well. Again, I said it before and I'll say it again, I really did love him and I really did care about him so deeply. But the problems really started to come along at the start of the school year in my 10th grade. If you didn't watch my previous episode, I am going to mention again, there were some red flags of his personality and his behavior that was very unappealing to me. He was aggressive, he had aggressive tendencies, he had some toxic tendencies, and he had some racist tendencies that I did not approve of. And for me in general as a person, I tend to do this in my life with people and I just pick up and notice negative traits of people and I never hold that against an individual. But once it starts stacking up and it really starts to show how an individual truly is and the problems that comes along with surrounding myself with a particular individual that has all of these stacked tendencies that are consistent so like it's truly like a consistent pattern with them that's usually around the time where i have to cut things off usually there is a final straw and in this case there definitely was so starting off this new year i was determined to really focus on my grades and i made this goal clear with my boyfriend too and he was really proud of that and he was really encouraging of it at first at least in the summer when you're we talking about things and also he was even letting me know that his grandparents were willing to take me in and for me to live with them but what that would mean is i would have to change schools because i would be in a different city and i wouldn't be able to spend time with my friends even though my boyfriend was really important to me at this time i think my friends truly did provide that stability in my life so even though the idea was interesting to me i think I knew that I would never go through with it because I wouldn't want to leave my friends. Sometimes in life, and I'm realizing this more and more as I get older, you want things that are best for you and sometimes that means that you have to give up things that you also want to be consistent in your life. But if that means that you have to let that go in order to 
move in the direction that is meant for you and is best for you and in the direction that you really are called to go in you do have to let some of these other positives in your life go too and it's always a really hard decision and i wish i could always just have my cake and eat it too so to speak but that's not really how it works in life when you make a decision that you're really focused on getting one thing or doing one thing or going in one direction other things that you really love and care about you can't bring everything with you you are going to lose some of these in the process so let's really get into how this relationship transitioned into our breakup now we did surpass the eight month mark that was a huge vulnerability for him and i was very happy for him but also like you shouldn't be so attached to a number in that sort of way like I didn't really appreciate that he was so stuck in his head over that eight month period, but I understood that there was some sort of trauma there or some sort of part of him that it was really important for him to reach an eight month mark. Regardless, the month of September was a big strain on our relationship with me focusing on school, focusing on my grades focusing on excelling in my life because inevitably I knew I would have to be able to support myself financially. So because I prioritized school, my boyfriend definitely felt that strain of a bit of a separation or disconnect. And what he was really feeling was me prioritizing something that wasn't us and him. I really did a very poor job in communicating this with him and I honestly didn't at all. Truth of the matter is that in this time of my life when I had feelings of, well, any feelings really, it was really hard for me to find the words to communicate them and honestly even understand them for myself. I can do that now because I understand myself so much more than I did back then, but back then I didn't know the real reasons why I broke up with him and what was going on with our relationship. And really, he was sensing me withdrawing into a self-focused state he didn't know what that was he just felt the strain and feeling that strain made him incredibly insecure and that insecurity caused him to lash out and in the way that it happened well we would talk on the phone every night and that was part of the way that we would keep in contact during this time while a, we lived in different cities, and B, I was really focused on my grades and school. He would let me know that he was really frustrated or not very happy with our distance. And then eventually, one day he brought up that his grandmother might think that I was cheating on him, which I told him, like, that's absurd. But, like, not only was that so absurd, like, I was so upset and hurt by him even thinking that like he has issues or had issues with his grandparents where he would always call his mother or grandmother a snake his grandfather abusive and so if you're saying that your grandmother is a snake why would you listen to what your grandmother's saying when she doesn't even know me you know me so much more than her you should know better that I wouldn't do that to you and that I'm not that type of person. So that was really hurtful to hear. And that really was like the needle in the haystack, like the needle that broke the whole haystack. That remark really was the final straw for me. And I, I knew it in my heart that this, I needed to cut him off. I needed to cut off and end a relationship. And I would have conversations with my brother about this too. He's like this, he's like that, like I can't do this anymore, like this isn't going well. To be quite honest, I don't remember how long we were together after that, but I do think I remember some additional distance between us because of my own feelings. And again, this is also something that I notice I tend to do too. And basically what I mean is when I do get to that final breaking point with an individual, I just completely back away. And usually the individual snaps back harder because that extra backing away is causing an additional strain on their insecurities. They're freaking out as to what's going on with that backing away. And 
they lash out. And that certainly played out in this instance. So what I mean when I say I was backing away is at the end of the school day, my friends would be like, oh, like let's not go that way because your boyfriend's gonna be that way and we can go to my house if we just flip out the back or vice versa, depending on like if he'd show up at the back, sometimes he would. Um, so I guess I was kind of trying to avoid him around this time. I just needed space from him. Again, I didn't know how to communicate this at the time. I should have, right? Like I definitely should have communicated to him my feelings. I just literally had no idea what was going on with me. Like I knew, but I didn't know how to put that into words. I had a sense or a feeling and I knew what I needed, but I did not know how to verbalize that. And honestly, even if I tried, it probably would have made this whole situation worse because I wouldn't have been able to communicate properly and effectively what it was that was going on with me, what it was that I needed, how it was I truly felt. Honestly, maybe that's the reason why most young relationships don't last because people just don't know how to communicate properly until they get older and they realize, oh, this is how I'm feeling. Oh, this is what I need. Oh, this is how you communicate with another individual properly. Very important. Regardless, I don't think he appreciated me trying to dodge and evade him after school when he was literally there waiting for me so we could spend time together when he was already feeling the strain on our relationship and needed me to be there with him. I'm sure that was really upsetting to him. The whole cause and effect laws of the universe really does apply here. He was feeling insecurities. I was backing away because of that. He was getting more insecure and lashing out because of this, which only made me back off even harder. And he was really starting to get frustrated with me. And I understand why he felt that way. My issue was definitely my ability to communicate and understand my own feelings at the time. But I understood eventually that I needed to end the relationship and I think a part of him knew it was coming because when I decided that it was time and I let my friends know and that I was doing it that day after school, one, they also kind of held me accountable to it. Like they were like, oh yeah, it's going down. Like, oh my God, drama. This is so exciting. But for me, it was like, no, this is real life. This is my life. This is not exciting this is kind of painful but after school i left the building i saw him at the front of the school where he would generally be waiting for me i approached him in silence not a single word was said from either one of us i gave him his dog tag back that he had given me to wear as sort of like a promise that i would be with him and be his girlfriend. Um, his friend was there at the time too, that you're spending time with during the summer on the occasion. I remember I handed in the dog tag, silence, turned around, walked back towards the school where my friends were watching, waiting, and I briefly saw him take his hat off. He looked really upset, throw it on the floor, and I I left. I will say and I will admit, I loved and cared about him so deeply that for genuinely years, I didn't know if I had made the right decision. Even to this day, I still have love for him and I still have care for him. I did not expect to get teary-eyed during this conversation today, wow. I no longer regret my decision. I think I made the best decisions for myself and I think that I could have worked things out with him maybe eventually and went in a different route with him, but I chose a different path for myself in life and that's okay. And both paths would have had their own ups and downs and challenges and good things and bad things, I think. So I, I know I didn't make the wrong decision. I made the best decision for myself at that time. So where we are right now is somewhere around September, maybe mid to late September. I don't completely remember, really. Maybe even October, honestly. It might be October during this time. This is where I'm going to end the story time for right now. And I'm gonna pick it up with my next story time very 
soon. The next story time will also be an easier one to watch. So no trigger warnings for the next one either. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, turning on that notifications bell so you don't miss my next story time coming very soon. Bye for now, till next time.